What you're about to see are some typical police situations. We'll leave the endings up to you. Situations like these come up every day in a law enforcement officer's career. You will be called upon to use your judgment time and time again, and almost no two situations will be alike. You will have to decide what is right based on the code of ethics you have sworn to as a law enforcement officer, as well as your own personal codes of moral and ethical conduct. Personal value judgments come into play in these situations more than we realize, and we must learn to recognize these. These are complex times we live in, and decisions are getting harder rather than easier to make. But remember, as a law enforcement officer on and off duty, your conduct does not just represent you, but your government and agency as well. The objective of your watching these different situations is to discuss alternatives and decide what would be the most appropriate and ethical course of action. Now, make your personal decisions and be prepared to discuss them. That was a pretty good lunch we had today. Sure was. Listen, this store's got a sale on compact disc players, and I've been interested in getting one. Do you mind if we stop in here? We still got a little time left on our lunch hour. Yeah, we've got about 20 minutes to spare. Let's go on in and take a look. Well, well, good morning. If it's not the park police this morning, how right. are you? It's, it's good fine. to see you. Good to see you, too. Listen, what can we do for you this morning? I'm interested in a disc player, compact disc player. I understand you have some. Oh, yes, on. we've got some. Sure. Come on, let me show you what we've got. We've got this little unit right here on sale. Four ninety five is the best price you'll find any place in town. But listen, let's don't worry about that four ninety five. Uh, for one of the government's finest, three ninety five. Wrap it up. You can take it home today. What do you say? Three ninety five. Yes, sir. Special price. You take credit cards. We'll take anything you've got. Wrap it up. Good. Come on, let's write it up. I know, honey. I am so sorry. Please don't blame yourself, Pat. Don't cry, sweetheart, please. We will, I promise, we will, honey. Okay, just try not to think about it. I'll be home real soon and, and we'll go to a movie or something. Okay, sweetie? Okay? I love you too. Okay, bye-bye. It didn't take, huh, George? No, damn it! Jesus, Tom, this is the fourth time. Maybe it just wasn't even meant to be. Are you going to try to adopt? I'd like to. But you have to be married three years just to apply, and then it takes at least five years. We are not so young anymore. Damn it! That's a shame, George. I'm real sorry. I just cannot stand this anymore. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to find me one of those attorneys and let you adopt babies of unwed mothers. Well, George, those guys have waiting lists just as long as the adoption agencies. Mm -mm. Not all of them. But wait, wait a minute, George. You don't mean you're going to one of those crooked attorneys. I don't know. I do know that I can't stand this anymore, and I do know it's about to kill Pat. George, you can't pick the race, the religion, the nationality of the child. So I don't care. Well, that's not the worst of it, George. They don't provide medical records. You, you could get a child that was sick. Or worse. I just can't stand this anymore. God damn it, Tom. I'll say. Those foreign tourists make me nervous. So what you gonna be doing this weekend, Steve? Well, I got a party to go to tonight. A couple friends of mine from high school just got married, bought a house out in Chevy Chase. A few of us got a house woman party together for them. Yeah? Maybe you'll get lucky. I hope so. Supposed to be a lot of women I never met out there. Good luck. Thanks, I'll need it. Stevie, you made it! All right! Hey, Steve, good to see you. Good. You off duty? 
Oh, yeah. All right, well, let's check it. <laughs> Let me get you a beer since you're off duty. Can I get a tour? Oh, Lou, sure. Step over here, I'll show you something. Um, you got a beer, make yourself at home. Look around. I'm sorry. Come on in, man. You want to do a line? No, yeah, thanks. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Do you know what's going on in the back room? <laughs> what's the big deal, guy? We we're all adults here. We're living in the 80s, man. Everybody does it. Loosen up a little bit. No, you can get in a shitload of trouble for this. Steve, from you? I found him fresh killed. Still warm. Now, Otis, we know you haven't been able to find work in a while. I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong, fellas. I did not shoot that deer, you understand? I found him. I found him dead. Otis, it doesn't make any difference whether you shot this deer or not. You know, if we find it on park property, we've got to take it with us. For what? So you can take it over there and throw it in that ravine? That don't make sense. I could use that deer meat. Oh, come on, Otis. You know we have to. We don't have any choice. Look, if y'all had driven by five minutes before or five minutes after I came by, you'd never know the difference. So what's it to you? Let me ask you a question. What, what's wrong with letting me have this deer this one time to feed my kids? They're, they're hungry, man. We could use the meat. Oh, just don't make us feel bad about this. Come on, fellas. Have a heart. friendly with the hostess. Look, friendship's the last thing on her mind. Have you seen the way she looks at me? She likes me. Look, Dan, you're crazy messing with the chief's wife. Can I help it that she's the division chief's wife? I mean, she's being more than polite. And when she gets back with our drinks, we're going to go for a little walk out on the dock. Man, you're nuts. Look, I can take care of myself, OK? I mean, she is the chief's wife. I don't want to make her mad, right? And besides, she's pretty good looking. Shh, here she comes. Be cool. You be cool. Hi. Where do you go? Yeah. Um, listen, <laughs> I'm just a little bit nervous about being out here alone with you. I mean, what, what's your husband going to think about this? Why don't you let me worry about my husband, and you can worry about where we're going to meet this week. You know, I was going to talk to you about that, too. You know, time-wise, that's going to be very difficult. Come on, Dan. You have a whole hour for lunch. That'll give us plenty of time to get to know each other. You can come here. We'll be all alone. Aren't you rushing things just a little bit? And aren't you talking too much? Uh, Dan, I can be very influential through my husband and he can shape your whole career. Why don't you let me help you? You're a very attractive young man and you're single too. Well, I don't know about that. Honey, I'd like to take you to dinner, but we're a little broke this month. We're broke every month. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be complaining, but everybody gets to go out for dinner, to a movie, something, once in a while. You know what I mean? I know, but I don't know what to do except get another job. <sighs> no, that's not the answer. Whew, I'm gonna be late. Love you. We'll talk about this tonight, okay? Okay, honey. See you later. Bye. Bye.
Honestly, we've had a lot of IRS audits through the years, and we never had one go as smoothly as this one. You've really worked hard, Fred, and instead of a headache, we've had a very pleasant experience, thanks to your efforts. Well, thank you, Harry. You've been very cooperative. You know, a lot of CPAs really give me a hard time. <laughs> not this one, and not this firm. We're all grateful to you, and we thought we'd like to express our appreciation to you in a special way. Wow, Redskins Cowboys. I don't know what to say. <laughs>